You know what we haven't done in a while? A 100% race. That is exactly what we're going to do today. 57 laps of the Bahrain Grand Prix online with you guys. That sounds like a fun lockdown date to me, don't you? Anyway, welcome back to a brand new video, guys. As uh, mentioned at the start, 100% race, you guys are involved, and uh, I'm going to start from the back to see if I can win the Bahrain Grand Prix over the course of 57 laps. It's not going to be easy. Damage is going to be on. I've turned off ghosting. Uh, what else? Sim damage. I'm not... Oh, goodness me. No, not simulation damage. Full damage. Uh, what I was meant to say was um, strict corner cutting. So um, I could well be disqualified in this race if I'm a bad boy. However, Bahrain isn't one of those tracks that's, you know, right up there for catching people out for, for corner cutting. But of course, it is a long race. About two hours or so. So I expect a few penalties to be racked up in this one. So we'll see how it goes. As I said, I'm going to start towards the back. I self-sabotage my qualifying lap, meaning we are starting from the back. In terms of strategy, I honestly don't know what we're going to do heading into this one. I don't have a dedicated uh, setup for this place. I'm just using this Russia setup, which I seem to be using absolutely everywhere. So that's what we're going to use for this race. Um, if you want to get involved, by the way, check me out on Twitter. Follow me on there. And uh, I always tweet out when I go live with these lobbies. This one in particular filled up rapidly. Um, so sorry if you did try to get in. And you couldn't, I'll try and do more lobbies soon. But um, here we go. 57 laps. We're going to lower the fuel load. I imagine there's going to be a few safety cars. I'm going to leave the strategy how it is. And we're just going to play it on the fly. I may switch to a one-stop going softs hards or soft mediums. Really just depending on how the safety cars work out, really. It's going to be the determining factor of how this race is going to play out for me uh, strategy-wise. So here we go. Ready for the Bahrain Grand Prix. Let's see if we can drag this Mercedes from the back of the grid to the front. Off we go. Pretty good start, actually, as we get alongside the Red Bull. I had to take to the grass there to avoid. And as such, they gave, gave us a bit of wheel spin as I also went up into overtake at the exact same time. So a bit of a recipe for disaster. We do survive. A bit of contact with the Red Bull at turn one. Uh, thankfully, front wing is intact. People are going every which way. Lots of contact, lots of wings being deployed, and at the end of it all, the first VSC of the race is now out. That Renault right in front of us has got a five-second penalty for something, probably contact down in its own one, so uh, that's a bit unlucky on his front. I'm making it a mission to just keep the tyres nice and warm as we get ready for the VSC to end and go back to green flag running. You can see that Renault has all of a sudden just take this... I want every gun we have to fire on that man. Is he serious? Old mate just takes the scenic route through the third sector. Um, and then just straight up rejoins as if I'm not... Look at that! That's absolutely disgusting from the Renault driver. Lap one! Lap one of a 57 lap race. And you go and do that. I bet he's going to quit. 20 seconds. I don't know. He's, he's probably... He's not even going to finish. He's one of those people who causes all the carnage for everyone and then pisses off and leaves everyone to deal with the wake of that. But... We'll keep moving. We'll keep marching on. We're not out of the race. I imagine it's going to be some safety cars in this one. So there's plenty of time to drag ourselves back up the order. There are a few fast people in this lobby. Uh, Flash, 224. Pretty fast guy. Um, that's it. <laughs> no, there are a few fast people, but um, I, 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 I'm not exactly familiar with them. So, um, we do have a work cut out for us in this one, and it'll be uh, uh, well, I think it'll be pretty tough to, to win this race. We're certainly going to have to work for it, that's for sure. But, um, yeah, recovering slowly. We got past that Renault who took us out earlier already. And uh, we're now up at a P15. Trying to put some pressure on the Alpha Tauri and the Williams who gets a bit of a wobbly exit out of the last corner. Up and a rich and overtake. And the Williams squeezes us off onto the grass. Not for the first time in this race. 
So it's uh, nearly three wide as we head down into turn one. Again, I'm giving the big squeeze. That guy is being very, very cheeky. The early stage of this one. I'm losing the back end every which way. Trying to get a nice exit. It has uh, not been the cleanest start to this race for us. But we're slowly making progress. That's one more that bites the dust. And now, hopefully, that's, that's maybe... Fingers crossed, the last of the uh, Crash Bandicoots. You never know what you're, you're signing up for when you invite a bunch of people to join your race. Um, but I, I, maybe the worst of it is over now. We'll have to wait and see. We've still got 54 laps to go. 54 laps. An incredibly long amount of time to... Uh, well, either get taken out again or make up the difference. Another VSC is being deployed. That was for the Haas driver, uh, Frederick, who... No, it's not It's not him. It's the other Haas that's uh, retired in this race. I faked her. I'm moving to the pit lane to see if anyone would uh, nibble at that bit of bait. And no one fell for it. So it's uh, pretty much as we were. Two people did uh, come into the box. But that was that were pe people who were already ahead of us. So we move up in a P9. VSC ends, and we are now back underway for green flag running once again. There's uh, there was no point in boxing. Oh, let's, let's get back to that in a second. As you can see, the Renault and the McLaren having a bit of a fisty cuff through the middle sector. We get past Mozart there on the medium compound tires. I think of some kind of joke, but I don't really know what or who Mozart is, what he does. That's pretty bad of me, isn't it? I'm guessing Mozart was a painter. Hopefully I'm right. Anyway, we uh, we move on in this Grand Prix. And yeah, the reason why I didn't stop on the last lap is because it would have just chucked me back into um, heavy traffic and it could have potentially just going, been going back to square one essentially. So I thought I'd just stick it out long and I'm, I'm waiting a bit of contact with the McLaren. Kind of backed out of it after I made contact just to make sure he could keep the position. But um, what was I saying? I'm waiting for the safety car, basically. I'm just uh, going to run long. And then when that inevitable safety car does come out, that's when we're going to box. Chuck on either the medium or the halves, depending on the timing. And then go from there, really. I think the aim is going to go, it's going to be to aim for like 15 to 20. In terms of a pit stop window for the for the safety car, we have another kind of safety car, but not the full course one. It's the VSC. It ends now, and got to get the timing right as we're losing Delta very quickly, and we're back underway for green flag running. Nearly got caught out by the the Delta there. I nearly got a drive through. Look at the Delta. It got really really close. I was three hundredths away from getting a drive through. The people in front and behind got caught out by that. And now they're into the pit lane to serve said drive-through. I'm guessing people don't really practice that all too often, but being a career mode merchant and going through my fair share of VSCs, I'm pretty good timing those well. So it always lends me well in making up some time on our competitors. But lap seven, we have a team radio. Currently, the fastest lap is a one minute thirty point nine. I say we have a team radio. I'm asking for team radio. What's the fastest lap, Jeff? He says 1 minute 30.9. Two tenths faster than what my actual best is, which is rather surprising because, as you guys know, I've got front wing damage. So the fact that we're only two tenths away from the best lap of the whole race is pretty encouraging for me as we get our first uh, corner cutting, track limits warning, of the race, three of those, and it's a three second time penalty. So let's endeavor to minimize those as much as we can. Ideally, I wanna have none. I wanna have no penalties at the end of this race. That's a, that's a tall order. But I feel like with safety cars, this race is gonna be won and lost on penalties, potentially. You can see Flash up the road, 17 seconds clear. He doesn't have a penalty and I raced him quite a bit before. You guys might have seen him in a lot of my videos, the online ones especially. Well, it's not like you've seen him in career mode. But um, he's consistent. And if you want to beat him, penalties down to zero is the way we go about that. And by avoiding penalties, we've just got to rein it back a little bit. So 
that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to hold back a little bit. I also need to save a bit of fuel, so I'm not pushing to my maximum at this stage, I would say. We're just kind of circulating, trying to get to the pit window, which is now open. Size are at 50%, um, but they still feel okay, to be honest. I'm still going to circulate for a while. LTU in the Red Bull just behind me stopped a few laps to go. He's now got the fast up of the Grand Prix. But he's gone on to softs again, and I don't believe... Well, he's not going to be able to go to the end of the race on those tyres. He needs to put on the medium or the hard to get to the end. And so, you know, with the, the people that are in this race still, the amount of people who are causing local yellows, making mistakes, spins, etc., the likelihood of a safety car is pretty high. So I, I'm just running long to see if I can get to a point where I can run the mediums to the end of the race. It's looking like a one-stop race now, unless there's, you know, more safety cars later on. But the target now is lap 20, 21. If I can get to 25, we're looking really good for a one-stop onto, onto mediums. But I think even from here, it might be, we might be pretty good at this stage. We're now getting caught up by a lap car in the McLaren. Uh, he's right behind us. He's on fresh tires. And this is a bit awkward because I, I've just got this feeling that he wants to race me. And so now I've gone, you can see I've gone back up into rich and overtake. I'm trying to get away from this guy because I'm near the end. I'm near my, my pit window. And the last thing I want to do is, is squabble with someone on better tyres. And he gives us a bit of a, a nudge through turn one. So he's definitely up for a race. Is Mr. WG plays or something. So trying my best to keep in front of him, but... Uh, these tyres, at this point, at least up against the new set of tyres, the Delta is crazy. Like, probably two seconds uh, faster is his tyre. As you can see, he's uh, gone for a big old yeet up the inside in the middle sector. Thank you very much for that. I was already off the track myself, but uh, he's just gone that little bit further. In the end, the battle is, uh, is, is settled, and now he can set after... The next guy, he makes a mistake, and now I'm going to overtake him again. Lovely. All of this is allowing Flash to get away, who is, uh, speaking of him, he's just made a pit stop now, he's into the lane, and he's onto the medium compound tire, so he's on the exact same uh, strategy, he's on the same wavelength as me, but, um, yeah, I'm just, I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting for that safety car to come out. Uh, we still have the front wing damage. We don't know what the true pace is like. I was kind of keeping pace with Flash, but I don't know. He might have been saving fuel tires himself. So it's hard to say what the true pace of anyone is at this stage as we got the inside of the Alfa Romeo. And uh, you can see the McLaren follows me through as well. He's been so racy. Um, and his, his eagerness to get through the field has just been his undoing. He's retired from the Grand Prix, and the safety car has now been deployed. We knew the safety car was coming, and there it is right there. Lap 22, we're going to switch on to the mediums, we're going to change the front wing, and our race has just come alive in this Bahrain Grand Prix. So into the pit lane we go. We've still only got one warning in this race. We're well and truly in this one. We're going to have fresher tyres than Flash, who is the effective race leader. We are probably going to lose a bit of ground here. Uh, it's going to be nip and tuck between us and LTU in the Red Bull. As you can see, front wing is being changed now. 8.3 seconds stop, and the Red Bull does get out in front of us in the end. So we've dropped a position there, despite him making an extra stop, which is pretty crazy. The amount of ground he made up on that fresh set of softs. Um, but there you go. There you go. I think the longer a race is, the more viable... A two-stop race is, uh, especially using a faster compound, because you've got more laps, more time to utilize the better rubber and catch up to the cars ahead. So, um, yeah, that's why 100% races can be quite good at times, which is why I want to do more of these online. I'll probably do one next week for the altered Bahrain layout, and then I might do one for Abu Dhabi. I'm definitely going to do one for Abu Dhabi as well. So make sure we get involved for those. But we're getting ready for green flag running. The race itself is essentially restarted now for us. This is, uh, well, the, the, the sky is the limit now because we've got a fresh tire on and we've got a full front wing on. So this is going to feel vastly different to the opening stanza of the race for us. 
25 laps in, and our race begins now as we uh, move our way past a couple of lap cars. Uh, because I've turned ghosting off, lap cars are fully solid, so they can take you out, but the reason why I've left them on is just a little bit of a challenge. If someone's left, you have to negotiate said solid lap cars. I think it just makes it more of a challenge. It's one thing I like about iRacing and like the different classes. Um, say if you got like LMP1 in one class and then like GT3 or GTE in another, you could be home and dry in terms of your own class, leading by like 30 seconds in in your class, but you never quite know if you're going to win because you've got all these slower idiots to, to negotiate for 24 hours or whatever it may be. I just think it keeps the race alive a little bit more, so that's why I've gone down that route. But anyway, uh, after that massive Bible of a ramble, we are going to delve back into this race. I'm currently sat behind the Red Bull of LTU and then DRL Fortress. They're deploying a lot of their ERS over the last like lap or two after the restart. And so my strategy was just to hold back a little bit, wait for them to deplete their battery a little bit, uh, maybe even fizzle out, space out between the two of them, and then go from there. Especially now that we've got the DRS enabled, I'm going to go full attack and he's going to defend the inside. We go outside at turn four, and that is us back onto the podium in this Bahrain Grand Prix. So now that, you know, things are starting to open up for us a little bit more, this will be a, a good time to, uh, you know, have a sit rep and, and analyze what the actual pace is like relative to Flash, who I think is, you know, going to be the favorite to win this race. Myself and Flash, uh, I, maybe LTU, he looked pretty fast in the opening stint. I feel like we're the two that are going to be duking it out for the win here. He is four seconds up the road already. And uh, we're now just dispatching of the Alfa Romeo, who has a lot of penalties. So I don't imagine he's going to be a factor in this race. He's already got 15 seconds worth. And there's still, like, half the race to go. So he, he might be 20, 30 seconds uh, in the red in terms of penalties. Whereas myself and Flash, we got nothing so far. So life is looking pretty good. And, um, you know, this race up until this point has been a marathon. I knew there was going to be a safety car. And so it, it doesn't make sense to go flat out to really push the bounds of the track to, to accumulate those warnings. Because it can all be reset in an instant anyway. And then, you know, all, the, all those laps where you were pushing trying to make up time is for nothing and you've got this baggage that you've now got to carry for the rest of the Grand Prix that being the time penalties so there's no real point going hell for leather until you probably know there's not going to be another safety car or it's unlikely that there's going to be another safety car on this lap in particular I'm pushing quite hard I am risking the potential to get a warning but I'm not quite overstepping the limit just yet but we are we're pushing to see what the pace is like, see if we can get a purple lap. Using up a lot of my ERS here, in fairness. Ran a bit wide at the last corner, I touched the outside curb, which is not what you want. It affects the rhythm and momentum out of the last corner. But we do get a fast up anyway, 129.5. And uh, yeah, that confirms right there, we've got the pace. We've got the pace to take it to flash. Do we have the consistency though? That is the question. Um, just looking at the leaderboard, you would say no. But I've got to say, as soon as I set that fastest lap, I went back into conservation mode. You can see I'm not in a great place in terms of fuel. So what I'm doing is I'm actually looking after the car. I'm looking after the tires in case there isn't another... Well, okay. How do I put this? I'm, look, I'm saving fuel in case there is another safety car later on. But also it looks after the tires in case there isn't another safety car so either way I've, it's kind of like a win-win so it's it's going to be close to get to the end of the grand prix on medium compound tires we've got one lap fresher tires relative to flash who uh made a mistake a couple laps ago there was a yellow flag heading out of the final corner but uh my educated guess would be he, would, he actually just waited up for me to be honest i think that's what he did because I think he might have been getting bored. Bearing in mind, Flash has been driving around on his own for 35 laps. I think he wants a bit of stimulation in this race, and we're going to give him just that. Get your mind out of the gutter. So, up in a rich... No, no, standard and medium. I actually am not deviating from my game plan, actually. I'm still 
looking to save a bit of fuel. I'm actually looking to build up my ERS. And then once we get closer to Flash, we're going to start using that ERS and hopefully getting in front and then building a gap and winning the grace. That just sounds simple, but it's far from it. Are we going to go for a move on this lap in particular? I think we might, you know, up in a rich. We were in overtake. Are we going to dive bomb down into turn one? I'm thinking about it. I do go for it. And that was... What does Martin Brundle say? Day late and a dollar short. That was one of those ones. Down into turn one. I was testing the waters. It's been a while since I've had to really jump on the anchors. And so I just thought I'd test to see if my brakes were still working. Yeah, they are. To be fair, they got me out of trouble there. So... Yeah, we'll uh, have another go. Maybe not on this lap. Just checking the engine temps. Up in a rich. We're not an overtake. We're not going for a Hail Mary. I did fake a little move to the inside to see if he would crack under pressure. But to be honest, there's still a long way to go in this race. Um, the pressure will not be mounting in the slightest. At least it wouldn't be if I was leading in. I had flash behind me. It's still it's still very much a marathon, but we're starting to increase the pace. Uh, we're building up that tempo, and we're starting to figure each other out. How are we going to win this race? Where is the other driver weaker? Who's got the strengths at low speed? Who's got the better top end speed? Um, that's what we're going to find out now as we get the move done and complete it for the first time. But look at Flash. He comes right back at us on the run into turn four. That is... Pretty formidable straight line speed, if I do say so myself, as we go up in a rich hand overtake in an attempt to see if we can make something work here. It's kind of all just a bit of a dress rehearsal for what might be towards the end of the Grand Prix. Um, I think both of us realize, as you can see, we're squabbling quite a bit. Um, I feel like we both are starting to realize now at this point, no matter who leads, they're not getting away because we both have equal speed we got the same pace pretty much if anything flash might be slightly and i mean ever so slightly faster than me um both in overall race pace and probably straight line speed as well but with the drs with the slipstream i don't think it's enough for them to get away that's why i don't think um it matters who leads and who doesn't it's just a case of thinking so far ahead we, we're i I reckon we're both already thinking about the final five laps and how are we going to position ourselves relative to each other? Who's going to be leading? Who's going to be in the front? Um, making sure we can look after our tyres the best. Um, that's going to be the deciding factor. Because by the time we get to lap 55, 6, 7, tyres are going to be feeling pretty rough at that point. And so it's important now to save the tyres, to run in lean revs through the slow speed corners, minimise the wheel spin, to look after the rears, but also make sure you don't lock up into uh, some of these heavy braking zones. That's something that I don't think Flash has been doing overly well. I've seen a lot of lockups from him over the course of this race, and it continues every every lap. There's at least a lockup somewhere, and when you lock up on this game, it does have an effect on the tires. The front tires do wear more when you lock up again. Another one into the triple left hander. It could be a glitch. It could be happening on my screen, but not on his. But I think it translates to both screens. So if he locks up, I will see it and vice versa. That's my understanding of it. I could be wrong, but you never know. 14 laps to go in this Bahrain Grand Prix and still there is literally nothing to separate the two of us. It's pretty crazy. We built out quite a, quite a lead to the rest of the field now. Everyone else has penalties really. So we can just we can afford to, to squabble to high hell if we really want to. But um, I don't think that'll happen just yet as we now lap our my teammate for the first or second time. G'day, g'day Bordas. How you going? But, um, yeah, another lockup in the turn one. If uh, we get to the end of the Grand Prix, we get to the end of this video, Flash, let me know down in the comments what your tire wear was like, whatever. If, if his tires aren't shot by the end of this race, I'm going to be pretty mad because I'm seeing lockups everywhere. And on my end, you can see I'm rarely locking up. So my I'm hoping my front tires are in a lot better shape than his. Um, hell, even now, but especially by the end of the race, if we continue to 
look after them. We're not going to look after them too well by having big bravado moments down in a turn one like that. But again, he gets a fantastic run out of turns one, two, and three, uh, which sets him up to have a go at us down into turn four. We go around the outside there, squeeze him to the inside part, and uh, that allowed us to have a more free-flowing run to take the lead of the Bahrain Grand Prix with only 12 to go. And uh, now you can see I'm upping the ante a little bit. I'm now leading this race. I'm seeing how long I can hold into the lead. But while I'm leading, I'm making sure that I don't burn any ERS. That would be awfully silly of me if I just wasted all my ERS to stay in front and then be left with nothing. He's got past me again, but there we go. He lets us go down into turn one. He, gives, he could have easily overtaken us, but decides to play it safe down in P2. Now, I've seen that. I'm like, nah, I'm going down into lean revs, and he can overtake me. Or he has to overtake me, I suppose. So there we go. Uh, he takes the lead back, and as such, he's not going to get away. If he tries to get away and burn ERS, I can just easily burn ERS too and stay with him, or vice versa. Stay with him despite not burning any ERS. That's the key. ERS is the key. Uh, fuel is looking better by the lap. We, we seem to be doing pretty well on that front. If anything, I could probably start using all of my fuel now. We've only got 10 laps to go. We've got into the lead once again, and now I'm going to see if I can keep the lead while not using any ERS. And again, great run for him out of the first couple of corners, which sets him up well, and it's annoying. <laughs> yeah, it is annoying because... I think I've not got as much straight line speed as what he does, and that is going to help him in the end game when it comes to those clutch few laps at the end when making the overtake is going to be decided on who can get to top speed quicker, basically, I, I think. And uh, I'm running 2.7 wings. I did lower the front wing to 1.7 for the incoming pit stop, but we never made it. We never came in again for, to make that next pit stop so I'm still running two seven wings don't know what flash is running it could be very very similar but it just seems to me like he's got better straight line speed than us I will of course recognize that he's laying down the power better out of turns one and two so uh, that that's fair play as you can see a lap car getting in the way that might interrupt his flow we're gonna hold the outside and as such we hold the lead of the Bahrain Grand Prix for now We've got to make sure that we don't let our ERS drop any lower than what it is now. We don't want it to be any lower than 30 or 40%. Um, I'm going to try and build that up as much as I can. And Flash is going to be, the, be doing the exact same thing still. The gap is the same, like less than a, a second separating both of us. You could pretty much throw a blanket over us. And um, we would both be covered. Wonderful analysis there, Ben. But anyway, here we go. I'm going to Rich. You can see I've uh, managed to stretch out a little bit of a gap this time. At this point, I was thinking, oh, is his tires finally going now? Are his rears letting go? Uh, but sure enough, he, was, he started catching up to me again on this lap, and that put an end to those theories, I suppose. Down into this uh, double left-hander. On this occasion, I've gone in a little bit deep myself, and that may open up the door for Flash to have a go at us. I'm... Resisting the temptation to go up into overtake. And he's going to go around the outside into the third sector. Or is he uh, not really an overtaking place? Especially on the outside. And uh, in the end, he just backs out of it. And we're able to hold on for the time being. Eight laps to go as we cross the line now. And this is getting tasty. I'm now testing. This is a test. Uh, using overtake in top gear right at the end of the straight. To see if that can keep me in front. Looked like it did pretty well for us there. Again, we need to really do better out of here because he just flies past us every time. That's uh, it's an absolute yoke as we defend the inside at turn four. Again, I was utilizing that tactic of using the ERS overtake late on in the straight to see if that would make much of a difference. That was a tactic that some people used to use back in the Kurz days of the F1 games. Um, but who knows what the actual best method is. I'm still testing. But uh, six to go now, and Flash now takes the lead once again. It's going to be tip for tat, I imagine, for a lot of this race. Again, positioning ourselves to make sure uh, we are exactly 
where we want to be. I want to be second, uh, heading on to the final couple of laps, and then I want to overtake right at the time where I can push for the rest of the Grand Prix and not worry about ERS, not worry about fuel. We're already at a point in terms of fuel now. Uh, it's just a case of getting the ERS to a level that I'm comfortable with. And I think the window for that is probably about three laps to go. I think if I can get into the lead with about two or three to go, I could probably manage my ERS to stay in front, maybe to the end. But he's got a lot of straight line speed and that makes life very difficult for us. But you know, his, his tires are older, they should be dying off. So you never know. We seem to be holding on well when we're leading uh, through the middle sector. Uh, but again, the very strong is out of turn one and two. Uh, that's the danger area, so it's um, interesting, as you can see. He was boosting out of that uh, final corner, so he's not exactly worrying about saving ERS. Maybe he's already saved up all of his ERS. I don't know what his situation is like. And again, he seems to be he was stretching away a little bit on that last, on this straight. But now we're getting into the business end of this race, and now we really need to start putting the pressure on. This is where... You know, we've been setting up the whole race. This is the moment we've been waiting for to uh, use what's left of our tires, to use what's left of our fuel and our ERS. This is the, the golden window to get into the place we want to be and then just defend from there. A bad exit out of that uh, double left-hander. And if anything, as we both up the pace to pretty much everything we've got left now, we're starting to see who's got the grip and who doesn't. And to be honest, it's starting to look like I don't have the grip. Uh, which is a little bit concerning considering this guy has been locking up here, there and everywhere. He doesn't really seem to be suffering overly much in terms of understeer or even wheel spin for that matter. He's not really been lighting up the rear tyres at all this race. So fair play to him. But uh, yeah, we're on the second last lap of the Grand Prix and um, we absolutely need to get past this guy on the next uh, start finish straight. So heading on to the last lap we want to be overtaking down into turn one. That's going to be ideal. But on this lap, um, my job is just to get as close as we possibly can. You can see I'm using overtake in unconventional areas of the circuit now. Just to make sure I can stay nice and close. As you can see, I'm just... Have been a couple of moments over the course of the lap where I've been getting on the power of that a little bit too early. Squirming a little bit. Because the tyres have well and truly seen better days. They're up near 70% now which is pretty much in puncture territory. As soon as we get above 75%, it's, uh, it's almost game over in terms of your, your tires. And surely this flash guy has got to be nearing that limit, uh, given that he's got older tires than me. He's been locking up everywhere. Maybe not saving the tires as much as what I have, in my opinion, but you never quite know. We're heading on to the last lap now. There's a lap car, which I think has just given DRS to flash. He has indeed, and so that is our game plan. That is our one opportunity to get the lead out the window. I was going to dump my entire battery down that straight to get the lead, and now he got DRS. He was able to maintain the gap. If anything, maybe stretch out a little bit. Rear tires are absolutely gone. This is the last lap of the Bahrain Grand Prix. We've been racing around this place for the best part of two hours all waiting, squabbling for this moment, and we're not gonna have a solid shot at it. Out of the final corner, up into Rich and Overtake, we're gonna give it everything it's got left. But in the end, Flash was too strong, and he wins here in Bahrain. Fair bloody play, I mean. You blew it! Thanks, Jeff. That does my confidence a world of good. Driver of the day, but in my opinion, it has to go to Flash. So there we go. That has been the Marathon Bahrain Grand Prix. 57 laps. 57 laps of waiting, preparing, positioning, tire saving, and it all comes undone on the last one. That bloody lap car. I can't believe it. I mean, I say that lap car. Without it, I... Who's to say? Alright, let's say I get in front of Flash. 
probably overtakes me down into turn four anyway. So in the end, end result is the same, but I can say, what if, what if that never happened? But in the end, GG's to him. Nah, he had the pace, I think, all race. Uh, he could have stretched away. He didn't have to wait for me. He did slightly, or he made a mistake. I don't really know. Either or, um, thoroughly deserved the win in the end. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like, subscribe, all that good stuff um, to take part in future 100% or even just regular open lobby races. Check me out on Twitter. Link in the description. I'll tweet out when I go live with these lobbies and you guys can be in a video if you can get in. But that's it for me today. Career mode, maybe tomorrow. Until the next one. I'll see you next time.